Kitco News special coverage of Paris Blockchain Week Summit is brought to you by Okra, permissioned DeFi composable index and strategy execution platform. We're now speaking with Tushar Natkarni. He is the Chief Growth and Product Officer at Celsius Network. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, David. First time I'm speaking with you, I've spoken to your CEO a lot, Alex Mashinsky, great guest, uh, very popular on our show. First time I've had the ple pleasure of speaking with you here at the Paris Blockchain Summit of all things. Uh, we're gonna be talking about content, strategy growth, uh, platform growth of Celsius and your strategy for achieving your growth objectives and of course some of the um, you know top trends in the DeFi and crypto space that you're keeping your eye on right now but first some recent news so a lot of changes in terms of the uh, in the US market in terms of the types of investors who are able to uh, uh, buy your yield products I don't want to misquote anything so I'll just let you comment on recent changes yeah, yeah so recently we uh, we launched uh, a new uh, custodial wallet so it's a custody wallet and an earn wallet yeah. uh, up until now uh, users in the US only had one a wallet uh, it's actually launching uh, on April 15 this Friday uh, and what happens with that is all existing users it doesn't affect international users at all all existing US users uh, that are currently with Celsius doesn't change uh, any of the yield that they've been getting on, on their existing coins and assets. Uh, for new users coming in, they'll need to get accredited uh, to be able to get into the earned product. What I think is important to, to note is for all users uh, in the US going forward, new users, they'll have uh, access to all the amazing products we have. So we have a suite of three types of products. The first product is what we call store and access. So store and access allows people to hold their keys with us, access it through on-ramps and off-ramps from the fiat world into the crypto world, all at no fees, whether it's transfer in or transfer out. And all the keys are held uh, in a very secure way with, on our platform, again, at no cost. The second set of products for us is borrow and spend. So borrow and spend is once you have your crypto on our platform, it allows you to take loans with your crypto as your collateral. As you can tell, you know, in the fiat world, it's really hard to get loans. Uh, 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 you can't even get loans at 1% APR. So we allow both of those. Simple couple of clicks in and you're able to get your loans at 1% APR. That's number one. The second thing is spend. So allow you to spend through our um, a credit card that is launching soon. And that service will be available to everyone. And finally, the third suite of products is what we call grow and earn. And Grow is available, again, to all U.S. customers, accredited or non-accredited, and that allows people to participate in the upside of the crypto market. So they can come on our platform, uh, onboard with USDC, and then change from USDC, what we call the swap product, into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, into a variety of 55 assets uh, and coins that we have on our platform. Allows them to play into it. And then the second product there is what we call our own product, which has yield. For that, that'll be uh, a yield for rewards. And that is for new customers coming in, they would need to get a credit to get into that product. But all the other products that I just talked about, available to everyone in the US, accredited or non-accredited, and, and nothing changes for international. This shift in, uh, in product, uh, how does it align with your overall growth strategy? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so this is exactly where, where we, uh, we feel Celsius as a company is maturing and growing. Um, we've, uh, for, we've invented the yield category and then we've added a bunch of products on top of that amazing products that people have really come to us our community loves us yeah. like our low low interest loans but now if you think about what we've been doing is really we've been creating a home for crypto uh, at celsius and this allows us to to take our message out and really help people saying it's not about running an immediate sprint it's all about a marathon when it comes to financial freedom and think about this as an access to a bunch of products that helps you get to financial freedom on, on Celsius. Okay, I want to come back to your overarching growth strategy yeah. uh, in just a moment, but let's talk about the DeFi space. Uh, yeah. You know, Celsius offers a lot of products. Yeah. You have a good outlook yeah. or a good pulse on the entire sector. Which part of the DeFi or crypto space are you seeing the most adoption right now? And are you seeing the fastest growth? Yeah, so uh, we have our DeFi arm at Celsius called Celsius X, and it allows our existing users, it's live today, a lot of people don't, don't know this, but it's live today, allows users to wrap their tokens and then go across multiple chains. We have like three chains already linked to this, but allows them to, to go through those chains and then get yielded as, as needed across these, these chains. Now, oh, 
the, the one thing that, that I think is important for people to realize is there are certainly people that are extremely uh, DeFi native, as we call them. Um, and they love DeFi, they're swimming in, in, in all of DeFi and getting you know, staking, getting yield out of there. But if you look at like a majority of our adoption, there's still a big gap between what people are doing in the traditional finance world, what we call TradFi, and the DeFi world, decentralized finance world. And what we bridge between these two worlds is what you would call centralized finance. In centralized finance, what we are offering at Celsius is an ability for people to understand that all the great pro products that they're familiar with could be interest that they're getting from their bank, could be loans that they get a much higher interest rate, credit cards that they can spend. All those products are very nicely available for them to access in the centralized world for uh, Celsius. And we offer all of those just on their crypto. So it's uh, ability to access all of these, uh, these great products, but in the crypto world that they're familiar with, and then Celsius X offers them a bridge to get from, if they're DeFi curious is what we would call them, from the centralized world into the decentralized world. Let's talk about the crypto and protocol side in particular. Any particular coins that have been gaining momentum recently and yeah. trending, um, you know, basically hot protocols on your platform right now? Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> as you can tell, the popular uh, two coins that are popular on our platform will continue to stay popular, and that's I, Bitcoin I, and Ethereum. I know it changes, uh, you know, depending on the market. So, yeah. um, actually, you know, I've talked to Alex recently uh, about this, and he was saying that a couple months ago, yeah. Ethereum had more trading volume than Bitcoin. It does, and this it does, might be one of the... the case? Yeah, it, it's, uh, so we did. Uh, we are still... It, it changes every every week or so, but we're starting to see Ethereum trading volume now. You don't if you just take all of the existing coins out and you just look at what the general weekly or monthly trading volume has to be. It's Ethereum and, and Bitcoin are very close today, right? And if you take those coins away, then we have a, uh, a, all of the top uh, 15 coins on our platform. Then I think we're missing maybe two, and then the following 30 coins are on our platform. So if you think about just from a uh, from a trading volume standpoint. The communities that have been really strong communities within their chain are usually the, the coins that we'll see um, getting a lot more uh, on our platform. Those are usually um, Cardano, ADA, AVAX, uh, Avalanche, Solana, Sol. Those are the typically the, the two or three top traded coins on our platform or traded as in like coins that we get uh, into our platform as assets. Interesting. Uh, I'm curious as to whether or not you have data on the holding period, average holding period of your users of, yeah. let's, just, let's just take Bitcoin or Ethereum. Yeah, so uh, so our platform, as you know, uh, our motto is still HODL, which is uh, which is you come in and yeah. you you, yeah. It, you don't sell again. So, so yeah. from a from a financial uh, freedom standpoint, uh, imagine the. Do you remember the time when uh, Tesla was uh, allowing people to buy Teslas with, with Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Yeah, I think they'd open it for three months. Yeah. At that point, Bitcoin was one fifth the price, right? And the price of a Tesla Series more Model Three was forty thousand dollars. So if someone actually used Bitcoin and bought that car today, they're driving a two hundred thousand dollar Model Three. That's now, right. with that, did you make the right decision? So what we say from a financial freedom standpoint is hold all your crypto. It's an actual investment that you're making in an asset class, an asset class that anyone can have access to. You don't need to be a private wealth management client to be able to have access to this. 99.9% .9 of the people actually got access to this asset class. And then if you need liquidity, and that's the reason most people want to sell their crypto, right? Uh, if you want liquidity, use loans. If you want to balance your portfolio, we have a product called Swap. So say you, you feel Bitcoin is at an all-time high for a while. Maybe there's going to be some cooling period. There's one way, to, one way to, to, to think through this is maybe I wanted to just take some of my Bitcoin and swap it into USDC. Just keep it in stablecoin. Maybe at some point Bitcoin is or Ethereum or any of these coins at a lower price. Maybe that's that time I want to swap from my USDC into these coins and all of that without leaving our platform and with no fees. So I wonder if that trading volume you're talking about, how much of that is just swapping versus buying and selling? You know? it's, it's, it's all swapping oh, on our pla oh, platform. Okay. And even the swapping is very limited. Okay. And, and, I, and, I, and we see that as a feature, not a bug. Right. So just to be clear, when you're talking about trading volume, it's not people day trading on Celsius. No, not at all. And, and in fact, as you know, Celsius does, it, the monetization model is not based on people trading, right? right. It's based on people actually holding their exactly. crypto with us. So that's the difference between uh, some of the, the ways that we've designed, designed a monetization model versus some of the exchanges where that's their monetization model to make incentivize people to trade more. Tell us about some of the APYs that you can expect 
on your platform. Yeah. Let's just take Bitcoin. Yeah, so Bitcoin right now, uh, up until one Bitcoin, you can get as much as 5% uh, APY uh, of yield. Uh, anything beyond that, we're at one and a half percent APY. And if you go through uh, across any of the, the other uh, places where you might be able to get yield, it crushes all of those from a yield standpoint. And the reason we are able to do this level of yield is we have a really solid uh, deployment practice on the back end for these coins. That's how we make yield. There's a lot of um, you know, other companies you might go to and if you truly look at the due diligence on them, the way they're providing yield is by actually minting more coins, right? So that makes it you know, one of these assets where it's actually reducing by value because it's dilutionary, Yes. right? For us, we actually go back and we'll make uh, our yield through multiple uh, strategies. Some of it is lending, some of it is market making, some of it is arbing. Um, but these are solid strategies that have been proven for us to be able to make yield. In lending, what is the interest rate you charge on lending? Uh, so that's institutional. That's, uh, yeah, uh, you mean on our, uh, on our platform for, re well, presumably, for retail lending? Presumably, if you're talking about a 5% APY on Bitcoin, you're, there's a spread there that yeah, that There is. So, so, that, so those rates are, are much more institutional based. Okay. We'll, do, we'll do this on a one-on-one. -on -one. They're, they're right. much more bespoke based on the deal. But uh, if you're looking at it on the retail side of lending, yeah. we have 1% APR on all of our loans, right? And, and we, so uh, you'd be able to, to take your cryptocurrency uh, and take it at 1% and uh, and get liquidity yeah. on your crypto. Now, while you're you're getting liquidity, that portion of your crypto collateral is locked, which means you're not making yield on that crypto. Right. Okay. So the overarching, I guess, revenue model for Celsius then, yeah. how do you generate your, so APY is cash outflow. What's yeah. your cash inflow? Uh, so it's, it's through yield generation. So we'll make we'll have yield generation through our you know institutional lending business. Uh, we'll have yield generation through uh, our hedging strategies, our ARB strategies, market market making, and all of that. When we make yield, we keep a small portion of it, keep our our business going, our profitability, and a, and a majority of that portion is passed on to uh, our community and right. our people, right? right? And that's where when people come back and say, "Wow, this is like industry leading in terms of your APY. How do I do it?" And one of the things that people miss is we are not keeping a large portion of the yield that we make. In a lot of the cases, if you go to traditional finance banks, that's where the difference in model comes in. Um, they keep a much larger percentage of, of their yield, passing it on to shareholders as opposed to passing it on to the bank depositors. Um, I've heard from several people that as the industry matures, yeah. it's possible that lending rates will come down a little bit. Um, is that, first of all, a view that you agree with? And second, what's that going to do with your, to your margins? Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're, we're continuously uh, monitoring the market, monitoring our business. And based on that, we actually change our rates, uh, you know, sometimes on a biweekly basis, every three weeks on our uh, retail side as well. Yeah. So, um, in fact, uh, what, what we are uh, slightly surprised by, not, not as much, is when we see uh, so many other platforms not changing their rates for sometimes three, six months uh, in a row on a certain coin. And, and for us, we always look at this as a demand and supply market. We have to make the economics work on both ends. So whenever, the com and the community knows this. So when, whenever we are changing the rates on the community, we change it both ways. So there was a time when stable coins uh, were at seven or 8%. There was a time when stable coins were at 12%, sure. right? And, and wherever we see the gain on the positive or negative, we make sure that we are sharing it, whether it's passing it or sharing it with the community. I wonder what you think about ETH 2.0 slated to come out this year. I don't know. They've been yeah. talking about this forever, but yeah. supposedly coming out this June, uh, the merge, it's supposed to reduce energy consumption by a tremendous amount. It's also supposedly going to grant ETH the opportunity to generate yield yeah. uh, you know, by itself double digits. How would that change the landscape of yield generation? Yeah, I think, uh, I think this is wonderful. Uh, we are big proponents of it. Uh, the, the yield generation there will be slightly different yes. because it's not going to be through a yield through lending product. Yes. It'll be a yield through staking, right? Yes. And I think the, basically the, the yield that you're going to get is, is through staking. We've, we are already seeing not just on our platform, across the industry, that there is a huge amount of just latent demand Right. for this product. In fact, a lot of people have gone in and locked their ETH today yeah. uh, in, uh, with a promise that ETH 2.0 is going to be locked, unlocked. The sorry. staking is going to be offered by your platform? Uh, yeah, it, so it will be offered uh, by us as a future product, but we're already seeing that uh, today from across uh, the rest of the industry. I, as, I'm just as curious as to how the mechanics work because why can't you stake ETH right now 
with those APYs? Uh, so, so the staking product for retail, right? The the UI has to be developed. Okay. Uh, you know, we have to offer it with uh, you know consent and things like that. So, staking as a product is down the line. It's very close for us to be able to be offered. Right. All of the backend work for staking is already done because we do that today as, as Celsius as a whole. Can the retail consumer stake ETH himself? Uh, for, uh, on other platforms, yeah. they, they're able to, able to do it on, on all of DeFi chains as well. Right. Uh, what I'm uh, saying is we can actually make this into a real retail product, okay. uh, uh, offer it uh, within our, our product UI UX. So you don't view this development as a threat to your existing product? Not at all. In fact, what that this what staking allows us to do, uh, going back to our earlier point, is uh, allows some of the the, the users that uh, were non-accredited, for example, in, in the US, also have access to this product. So when we think about it as you earn, there are multiple ways in which you can earn yield. One is yielding through lending, one is staking and getting your yield. So for uh, international users and, and US uh, accredited users, they'll have access to both of these products. For, for US non-accredited, they'll still be able to generate yield. They'll generate yield through staking. Okay, let's talk about Celsius's uh, current uh, size and profile and then your growth yeah. strategy. So user base and AUM? Yeah, we've, uh, we've just been uh, uh, extremely humbled by the, the amount of uh, growth that we've seen in the, in the recent years, the kind of support that we're seeing from community. Uh, so we currently have 1.7 million users on our, on our platform uh, and uh, $23 billion in assets. Uh, and the growth has just been uh, terrific across the last, uh, let's call it one year. Um, what we call 2021 uh, is truly institutional. And when I say 1.7 million customers includes institutional customers, our corporate customers, high net worth, not just retail customers. And what we've seen in 2021 is truly the, the advent of institutional uh, adoption of crypto. Uh, and we're starting to see even more of those in uh, you know, a demand for institutional products. So uh, the way that Celsius' product works today, um, and you know, we smile a little bit at Celsius when, when we say this, it was built institutional grade and offered to retail users, right? In a lot of the cases you'll see uh, across the landscape, retail products being built and trying to grow up to be offered to institutional customers. Our product was always institutional grade offered to retail. And so it was very easy for us to pivot and, and offer it to corporate customers, to institutional customers um, and others like family offices. Okay, so let's talk about, I don't know you want to give hard numbers, but a target for your growth and, and, and the objectives and how you plan to meet those objectives? Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, threefold is, is how we think about a three-prong approach. One is uh, our uh, organic approach through getting more users. We, we have a very healthy referral channel and we have a very healthy organic channel. I think supplementing that with uh, more of our paid advertising will, be, will help our growth, but then bolstering our referral channel and our existing community channel, that'll continue to get, get us organic growth. The second uh, aspect is international growth. That is where Celsius is going to be pushing uh, very intentionally uh, uh, through this year, through 2022 and beyond. And the way we think about it, uh, international is, is twofold. One is through our partnership uh, uh, element, and second is through so make, having partnerships in international markets, but also through some inorganic uh, uh, expansion. So doing uh, very selective and targeted and strategic uh, M&A work uh, looking at certain partners that we can have exclusives with. Um, so that'll be our, our overall international strategy. And then finally, the, the third one being a full suite of products. So we have a slate of products that I would be, uh, I would love David to come back uh, on the show and share with you as we get more and more, uh, you know, close to releasing them. Right. But I can tell you right now, we have a credit card already uh, in the works that is coming soon for our, our, our customers. Credit the card. a credit card for Celsius, so you can use it in the fiat world and pay it off with your crypto. So I can take the credit card, buy Starbucks with it, with it, do whatever you want, and then you can decide if you want to take. Are you partnering with any existing credit card uh, providers, or yeah. are you making your own? We no, it will be with uh, with a bank. It will be with one of the large, uh, you know, uh, uh, card providers you can't as well. Comment on who? But it will be. But it you will hear it from me soon, <laughs> as soon as I come on the platform. But here's here's an announcement that uh, I haven't talked about uh, at all on uh, on any sure. any uh, other platform. Yeah, give me a scoop to share. I, I'll give you this. So you know how we have this mission of bringing financial freedom to yeah. the masses, yeah. the next hundred million customers, right? 
So every time when we, we discuss this in our strategy meetings, in our product meetings, in our growth meetings, the one thing that comes across is we have this card, but at the end of the day, it's a credit card. What does that mean? It depends on your FICO score in the US, on your credit score in the fiat world. We have so many of our customers that actually have great crypto assets that they bring to our, onto our platform. So what we are going back and reinventing is, is there a way that we can look at their crypto assets that are on our platform and give them some kind of a credit card or a debit card based on what they've been doing with us on, on, on crypto. Are you requiring collateral then? So it has to require some collateral, uh, but then is, that a, is there a way that I can manifest their collateral and put it into a plastic card that can go into their wallets, regardless of what their score is in the fiat world. If we are truly crypto natives, if we are truly crypto first. So I've got a FICO score of 200, but I've got uh, 10 Bitcoins in your wallet. And there's a lot of people like that, right? <laughs> as long as you hold. I can still qualify for your credit still, card? Well, not a credit card. It might be a debit card, right? Based okay. on the collateral that you might have. Right. Okay. And so that was that would be a, that would be a secondary version that we use. So, so the credit card we're offering is certainly based on your FICO score. The debit card we would offer is not necessarily a credit card, right? It's based on the collateral that you have on the platform. You institutionalize that, manifest that as a loan that goes into your... The example I gave is probably, a like, it's unlikely someone has a FICO score of 210 Bitcoin somewhere. Yeah. Um, highly unlikely, possible, unlikely. Possible. Uh, look, so let's talk about inorganic growth. Now you've talked about the organic portion, yep. inorganic growth. What does that mean? How do you plan to achieve growth? through external measures. Yeah, so uh, so what we are looking at is when we say uh, that we want to onboard the next 100 million customers onto the platform and help them get to financial freedom, what we do not mean is putting a, a Celsius storefront and getting one user through the door at a time. Yeah. There are other ways to get through it, which is there are so many great projects, so many great companies uh, that currently operate with several users. It could be someone in e-commerce, for example, that has their wallets connected we would be able to onboard these, these users onto our platform through a simple API. Maybe we do a little bit of a custom product API, onboard these wallets onto our platform, and all the users day one start getting yield on their, uh, on their crypto. They can start getting loans at 1%. That's what I mean when I say international growth through other means, not through organic means, one user at a time. Mm, interesting, okay. Are you acquiring banks anytime soon? Uh, we, we are, we're not acquiring banks anytime soon, so let me just be on, be <laughs> okay. on record saying that. I think what is interesting to understand, though, is what having some kind of these, these license, the money transmitter license, the banking license, what that enables us to do with our products. I think that is important. Um, and there's always discussions internally that, that we have which says, uh, what does that provide us as we are growing and maturing as a company? as we are starting to become you know, much, much bigger of a presence across multiple uh, aspects of a user's financial, people's financial life, what are some of the things, uh, bespoke things that we can offer? Maybe it's structured products uh, and things like that. So when we think about you know, uh, banking or when we think about uh, money transmitter licenses, we don't think about them as like, oh, these would be nice for us to just have in our back pocket. We think about those as like, what does that enable us to do to provide the best services and products for our users. Okay, so final question, I'm gonna talk about your product strategy. Now, you've talked about a lot of your earned products already. You probably ask yourself this question every single day when yeah. you wake up, what does the average crypto user need? Suppose I've got, you've got somebody who has never been exposed to yeah. cryptocurrencies either through trading or investing, yeah. he wants to be onboarded. What does he really need right now? Yeah, so I think, uh, I think it's great uh, that you asked this. Uh, users, I think, need a, a couple of things. But before we can get into the actual products and the product strategy, uh, there's this term we use inside of Celsius called trust deposits. And what we see a lot of users do uh, on, our, on, on our platform uh, when, when they join is they're making their trust deposits, what we call it, before they make their real deposits. Trust deposits are the following. When they get on the, onto the platform, they're already, you know, we've, they've made some trust deposits. They've viewed our, you know, internal or sorry, our external uh, ask me anything. Uh, you know, where our CEO uh, founder gets on on video every single week and answers questions from the community. We have the same thing on Twitter Spaces as well. They've probably seen the the awards we've got. They've probably seen like uh, the kind of compliance we have, the kind of risk teams we have, the kind of security we've had, never been hacked. Um, and, they, and based on that, they get a, a sense of comfort that they can onboard onto the platform. 
Once they onboard onto the platform, the, some of the behavior that we see is rather than getting all of their crypto, they're getting things like $50 and, and they'll immediately withdraw it because we say there's no fees when you take your money out or when you get take your crypto out, there's no, fine money, there's no fees when you bring your crypto in and we won't hold it, it's all on you, no friction. And, and when they take it out, they're kind of surprised. They'll, they'll come back and they'll say, okay, I did $50, let me do $200. And then, and then they wait for one period for them to get yield on it. And after they get a little bit of yield on it, just one week of, of accruing, because we pay out every Monday, they'll take the, the, the 200 and they'll take it out. And again, oh wow, no friction. And then they'll bring in their $5,000 or their $10,000. And what we say is, we, we pass the trust test. The, these people now trust us as being being the the true custodians of their uh, their crypto, and now now we can start thinking about them as like, what is your home for crypto? What are your needs? Your loans, your yield, and things like that. What's the next biggest uh, development in crypto and DeFi right now? Is it the metaverse? Is it Web three? Is it all of the above? NFTs? And then you've already talked about strategy, so I just want to talk about what this trend is, yep. and whether or not you plan to as a content strategy officer, yeah. accommodate that trend. Yeah, for sure. So I think, uh, uh, you know, as, as we look uh, to the future, the big trend I think is going to be a seamless movement between CFI and DeFi. I think for the longest time, people have thought about CFI, the CFI world and the DeFi world as two separate things. So they're like, well, if I want to do my staking, if I want to have a governance token, I'm going to be in the DeFi world. I'm going to look at some you know, projects that have derivatives or exotic options, and that's where I'm going to make my money and my yield. And then I have a little bit of this, this thing in the CFI world where I'm going to go in and I'll have my you know, keys uh, uh, you know, taken care of, uh, secure, and then I can have my yield, my loan product, maybe my credit card product. And I think what we are seeing in the near term is the seamless movement between CFI and DeFi. Um, I, we strongly feel, I think, towards the end of 2022 and really in 2023, a lot of the people that we consider DeFi curious will be DeFi natives by the end of that year, which means we've, and, and if they are, we will say that we played a small part in making that happen. The reason is we're taking the friction out, the fear out from, from being in the DeFi world or else these two worlds, if no action is taken, they'll likely just stay as, as two worlds uh, with users actually having their accounts in these two places. So making it seamless for them to use wallets, move across chains, having cross-chain interoperability. When, I, when we say freedom, we actually mean freedom to move across uh, unrestricted as well. Okay, yeah. Interoperability is a big buzzword I've been hearing, but uh, thank it you is. so much, Tushar, yeah. for sharing your thoughts on uh, thank Celsius you and giving us an inside scoop on a lot of your developments. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lin. Kitco News special coverage of Paris Blockchain Week Summit is brought to you by Okra, permissioned DeFi composable index and strategy execution platform.